So you've got to have your brain and your ovaries communicating with each other. If that communication is not happening, then your cycle is going to be thrown off. Now, I'm going to show you some fasts that I love for clearing up the hypothalamus and pituitary and getting it to work right. I'm also going to show you some things that we know about the ovaries and things like autophagy that will help with the ovaries. Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, ladies, I'm gonna speak directly to you guys that don't have a cycle, and you're like, should I fast? And if I should, when should I fast? I'm gonna answer that question on this video. So, for starters, if you're new to my channel, I just wanna say welcome. I am teaching all things fasting and we're excited to have you. So please hit the notification button and subscribe. And you guys that share these videos out and I keep hearing people that are binge watching my videos. I just wanna say thank you. I am on a mission to change the way that we are doing health and fasting is an incredible door in. So thank you for all your support and for sharing these out. Now let's get right to it. Okay. Should you fast if you don't have a cycle? And my first answer is, heck yeah, absolutely you should be fasting. In fact, fasting might be the thing that brings your cycle back. So let's break this down because I want you to be your own detective so you can figure out how to use fasting as a tool to bring your cycle back. Now, I do wanna point out, I know postmenopausal women are listening to this and they're like, hey, I don't want the cycle back. I'm gonna to talk to you as, as well, so sit tight here for a moment. So the first question to ask yourself is, why don't you have a cycle? What's the root cause? And I can tell you what we see in our clinic, what we see with our resetters is, is several different things. So the first, you could be on birth control. A lot of times that will throw it off. Uh, it could be surgical, maybe you had a hysterectomy. Uh, you could be randomly missing it. You, maybe you're not sure, maybe you're menopausal, peri or post. Maybe you have a hormonal condition like PCOS or some other diagnosed hormone condition that has you off. So the first thing to realize is that each, everybody that's listening to this may have a different reason they don't have a cycle. So if you really wanna go investigating why you don't have a cycle, this is why I love the Dutch test. It is a hormone test, it's a urine test. You do it at home and it can tell us exactly where your hormones are at. So if you wanna go diving deeper, just put Dutch test in the comments. My team will send you a link on how you can get that test. Now, regardless of whether you do the Dutch test or not, in order to regulate our sex hormones, these are the hormones that help us with a cycle, we have to keep insulin in check, which is why fasting is so amazing. So let's look at how we can use fasting. And there are a couple other uh, typical food and nutrition strategies we can use. So sit tight, I'm gonna go through that. But the first thing is we have to manage insulin. So we're gonna, we're gonna get into what fast manages insulin here in a second. The second thing we've gotta look at is, okay, well, what organs do I need to work right? And in order to make hormones, you've got to not only have the insulin balance, but you've got to have your hypothalamus, pituitary, and ovaries. They work like a team. So you've got to have your brain and your ovaries communicating with each other. And if that communication is not happening, then your cycle is going to be thrown off. Now, I'm going to show you some fasts that I love for clearing up the hypothalamus and pituitary and getting it to work right. I'm also going to show you some things that we know about the ovaries and things like autophagy that will help with the ovaries. So regardless of why you've lost your cycle, we've got to get those three organs in sync. Now, postmenopausal women, you know, you're not supposed to have a cycle, but you still need these organs in sync and you're losing hormones as the years are going on. So even if you're not making hormones, we need to get you to metabolize them and use those hormones that you are making. And you can use fasting as a tool to use your hormones, your little bit of hormones that you have left. We can use that uh, to, as, to our advantage to be able to get you to use those hormones well. So organs that you need working, HPO access. Now, here's something interesting. Stick with me here. Just because you're making hormones doesn't mean you're metabolizing hormones. 
So in order to make hormones, we need the HPO access to be working right in order to metabolize hormones, meaning we're breaking them down so that they're usable to the cell. You need two organs. You need your liver and you need your gut. So we now have four different parts of your body that have to be in tip top shape in order for you to have a cycle. And we know we need to have insulin well managed. So now we can come in with our different fasts and apply them. So for starters, my favorite fast for getting the brain to work right is autophagy fasting. That is 17 hours of fasting. Um, I, and then you break your fast with fat, you stimulate autophagy and autophagy will repair the neurons in the brain and get your hypothalamus and pituitary working well. Now, the other really cool thing is that we know around the outside of the ovaries are a set of cells called the fecal cells. And the fecal cells, they're built for autophagy. They want to have autophagy stimulated. So your ovaries love autophagy fasting. 17 hours, autophagy starts. If you continue, 72 hours is where it peaks. So any fast you do between 17 and 72 hours is going to help to repair that HPO access. So make sure you're doing some of those longer fasts either on a weekly or a monthly basis. Okay, second thing, in order to metabolize these hormones, we gotta have your gut working right. So the estrobilome, my favorite set of, of bacteria in the gut, the estrobilome is gonna break estrogen down. You need estrogen to be able to signal to the ovaries to release an egg if you're pre-menopause. You've got to have that estrogen usable. So you need, you need to lean into autophagy fasting to get the brain to be able to coordinate the production of estrogen. And you've got to use those longer fasts so you can repair your gut to break estrogen down. And my favorite fast for that is the 24 hour fast. Uh, I call it the gut reset and it will reboot your whole intestinal tract. So make sure Again, once a week, you're doing a longer fast, 24 hour fast for gut repair, 17 hour fast for autophagy. I have all these fasts, by the way, if you guys are listening to this and you're like, whoa, what's this woman talking about? I have all these fasts on a giveaway uh, handout for you. It's called different types of fasting cheat sheet. So just put cheat sheet in the notes and my team will come in and get that for you. And that's free. You guys can have that. So. That's how fasting can ha help. We can lean into autophagy and we can lean into gut repair. Now we're like working on these organs that are both metabolizing and making hormones. Okay, so is that all I need to do? What about, should I be eating something? And the answer to that is yes. So you need estrogen to be able for an egg to be released. You also need progesterone for the inner lining of your uterus to be able to shed. So what do we know about progesterone? Well, we know it doesn't like fasting, so you don't wanna do a lot of fasting, but you can lean into foods like the hormone building foods, like um, the squashes and the potatoes and the beans, I, uh, tropical fruits, citrus fruits. I, I spoke a, a lot about that. So you've gotta go into these states of deeper fasting during your week, and then you're also gonna to wanna to take a couple of days, maybe one to two days out of your week where you're not fasting and you're building up these hormone foods. So again, if you guys are confused, I just wanna remind you that everything I teach here on this channel is how to go into the in and out of states of feast, famine, cycling. And when you're balancing hormones, this is pivotal. This is absolutely pivotal. So fasting wise, we're gonna do some of the longer fasts. Feasting wise, we're gonna lean into, it doesn't mean you go eat a tub of ice cream. It means that you're gonna lean into some of these uh, hormone building foods. And you're going to want to do that on a fairly regular basis where you're going in and out. Okay. Now, if you're like, okay, I think I got it. Not quite sure what she's saying. Let me give you some resources because you're going to have to be your own detective. What I'm doing with this video is really giving you, okay, yes, you should fast. If you don't have a cycle, don't let anybody tell you not to. Now let's look at this. Let's look at the HPO access. Look, let's look at the liver. Let's look at the gut. Let's use those two fasts I just talked about. Let's use that one style of eating. Let's learn how to switch that in and out. If that is confusing, join me in my academy. This is where we're teaching women how to customize fasting. 
So just put Academy in the notes and come on in. We do Zoom calls. I have videos over there that have never been shown anywhere else. We have an incredible network and support so that you can customize this. Second thing, if you're new to fasting, I got my cheat sheet for you that I outline all my favorite fasts. So just put cheat sheet in there. If you also want to dive in deeper into understanding your hormones, please do the Dutch test and make sure that you have a good profile of what you, where your hormones are at. And then lastly, postmenopausal women, I'm with you. I've got you. I know when we age, especially as we get over 50, where those hormones are not coming back, they're going down. So make sure you got the menopause reset. I go through five lifestyle changes that need to happen after 40. But if you're a postmenopausal woman, these five lifestyle changes become even more crucial. So just put menopause reset in there. My team will send you a link for that. Okay. I, again, I hope I'm waking you guys up to the fact that fasting heals so many things, but there's a lot of nuance to it. So we don't want to leave you out of the fasting conversation. If you don't have a cycle, we just got to apply the principles that we know. So give me feedback and you guys, Hey, you're so good at this. If you have brought your cycle back using these principles that I've been teaching for the past several years, put it in the notes so the community can see because this is how we all learn from each other. And as always, you're a flipping miracle. Your body was born to heal. Don't ever give up on yourself. There is a reason why you're not at that level that you want to be at. You can heal yourself. I hope it helps.